Nader Shah H. Afshar or Nadir Shah ruled as Shah of Iran and was the founder of the Afshara dynasty which briefly became one of the most powerful Persian dynasties in Iranian history. Because of his military genius as evidenced in numerous martial encounters throughout the Nadirian wars such as the battles of Herat, Maimandubst, Mershkut, Adarband, Bayavad, Kirba Pass, Karnal and Kars, some historians have described him as the Napoleon of Persia or the Second Alexander. Nader Shah was a member of the Turkic Afshar tribe of northern Persia, which had supplied military power to the Safavid state since the time of Shah Ismail I. Nader rose to power during a period of anarchy in Iran after a rebellion by the Hotaki Afghans had overthrown the weak Shah Sultan Hazalan, and both the arch enemy of the Safavids, the Ottomans, and the Russians had seized Persian territory for themselves. Nader reunited the Persian realm and removed the invaders. He became so powerful that he decided to depose the last members of the Safavid dynasty, which had ruled Iran for over 200 years, and become Shah himself in 1736. His numerous campaigns created a great empire that briefly encompassed what is now part of what includes Iran, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, the North Caucasus, Iraq, Turkey, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, North India, Oman and the Persian Gulf, but his military spending had a ruinous effect on the Persian economy. Nader idolized Genghis Khan and Timur, the previous conquerors from Central Asia. He imitated their military prowess and a euro especially later in his reign a euro their cruelty. His victories during the Nadirian Wars briefly made him West Asia's most powerful sovereign but his empire quickly disintegrated after he was assassinated in 1747. Nader Shah has been described as the last great Asian military conqueror. Early life, Nader Shah was born in the fortress of Dashgird into the Kiriklu clan of the Apshas, a semi-nomadic Kazilbash tribe settled in the northern valleys of Khorasan, a province in the northeast of the Persian Empire. His father, Emam Kole, was a herdsman who may also have been a camel driver and coat maker. He died while Nader was still young. According to legends, Nader and his mother were carried off as slaves by marauding Uzbek or Turkmen tribesmen, but Nader managed to escape. He joined a band of brigands while still a boy and eventually became their leader. Under the patronage of Afshar chieftains, he rose through the ranks to become a powerful military figure. Nader married the two daughters of Baba Ali Beg, a local chief. Fall of the Safavid dynasty Nader grew up during the final years of the Safavid dynasty which had ruled Iran since 1502. At its peak, under such figures as Abbas the Great, Safavid Persia had been a powerful empire, but by the early 18th century the state was in serious decline and the reigning Shah, Sultan Hazalan, was a weak ruler. When Sultan Hassan attempted to quell a rebellion by the Ghazai Afghans in Kandahar, the governor he sent was killed. Under their leader Mahmud Hotaki, the rebellious Afghans moved westwards against the Shah himself and in 1722 they defeated a force at the Battle of Gulnabad and then besieged the capital, Isfahan. After the Shah failed to escape to rally a relief force elsewhere, the city was starved into submission and Sultan Hassan abdicated, handing power to Mahmud. In Khorasan, Nader at first submitted to the local Afghan governor of Mashhad, Melk Mahmud, but then rebelled and built up his own small army. Sultan Hazan's son had declared himself Shah Tarmasp II, but found little support and fled to the Qajar tribe, who offered to back him. Meanwhile, Persia's imperial rivals, the Ottomans and the Russians, took advantage of the chaos in the country to seize territory for themselves. Fall of the Hotaki dynasty Tarmasp and the Qajar leader Fath Ali Khan contacted Nader and asked him to join their cause and drive the Ghazai Afghans out of Khorasan. He agreed and thus became a figure of national importance. When Nader discovered that Fath Ali Khan was in treacherous correspondence with Melk Mahmud and revealed this to the Shah, Tarmasp executed him and made Nader the chief of his army instead. Nader subsequently took on the title Tarmasp Kule. In late 1726, Nader recaptured Mashhad. Nader chose not to march directly on Isfahan. First, in May 1729, he defeated the Abdali Afghans near Herat. Many of the Abdali Afghans subsequently joined his army. 
the new Shah of the Ghazai Afghans, Ashraf, decided to move against Nader but in September 1729, Nader defeated him at the Battle of Damhan and again decisively in November at Mershak Hort, banishing the Afghans from Persian soil forever. Ashraf fled and Nader finally entered Isfahan, handing it over to Tarmasp in December. The citizens' rejoicing was cut short when Nader plundered them to pay his army. Tarmasp made Nader governor over many eastern provinces, including his native Khorasan, and married him to his sister. Nader pursued and defeated Ashraf, who was murdered by his own followers. In 1738 Nader Shah besieged and destroyed the last Hotaki seat of power at Kandahar. He built a new city near Kandahar, which he named Naderabad. Ottoman Campaign In the spring of 1730, Nader attacked Persia's arch-rival the Ottomans and regained most of the territory lost during the recent chaos. At the same time, the Abdali Afghans rebelled and besieged Mashhad, forcing Nader to suspend his campaign and save his brother, Ebrahim. It took Nader 14 months to crush this uprising. Relations between Nader and the Shah had declined as the latter grew jealous of his general's military successes. While Nader was absent in the east, Tarmas tried to assert himself by launching a foolhardy campaign to recapture Yerevan. He ended up losing all of Nader's recent gains to the Ottomans, and signed a treaty ceding Georgia and Armenia in exchange for Tabriz. Nader, furious, saw that the moment had come to ease Tarmas from power. He denounced the treaty, seeking popular support for a war against the Ottomans. In Isfahan, Nader got Tarmas drunk then showed him to the courtiers asking if a man in such a state was fit to rule. In 1732 he forced Tarmas to abdicate in favor of the Shah's baby son, Abbas III, to whom Nader became regent. Nader decided he could win back the territory in Armenia and Georgia by seizing Ottoman Baghdad and then offering it in exchange for the lost provinces, but his plan went badly amiss when his army was routed by the Ottoman general to Palazman Pasha near the city in 1733. Nader decided he needed to regain the initiative as soon as possible to save his position because revolts were already breaking out in Persia. He faced Tapal again with a larger force and defeated and killed him. He then besieged Baghdad, as well as Ganja in the northern provinces, earning a Russian alliance against the Ottomans. Nader scored a great victory over a superior Ottoman force at Bayavad and by the summer of 1735, Persian Armenia and Georgia were his again. In March 1735, he signed a treaty with the Russians in Ganja by which the latter agreed to withdraw all of their troops from Persian territory resulting in the re-establishment of Persian rule over all of the Caucasus again. Nader becomes Shah. In January 1736, Nader held a coral tie on the Mogan plain in Azerbaijan. The leading political and religious figures attended. Nader suggested he should be proclaimed the new Shah in place of the young Abbas III. Everyone agreed, Mania Euro if not Mosta Euro enthusiastically the rest fearing Nader's anger if they showed support for the deposed Safavids. Nader was crowned Shah of Iran on March 8, 1736, a date his astrologers had chosen as being especially propitious. Religious Policy The Safavids had introduced Shah Islam as the state religion of Iran. Nader was probably brought up as a Shah but later espoused the Sunni faith as he gained power and began to push into the Ottoman and Mughal empires. He believed that Safavid Shiism had intensified the conflict with the Sunni Ottoman Empire. His army was a mix of Shi and Sunni and included his own Kazilbash as well as Uzbeks, Afghans and others. He wanted Persia to adopt a form of religion that would be more acceptable to Sunnis and suggested that Persia adopt a form of Shiism he called Arari, in honor of the sixth Shi Imam Jafar al Sadiq. He banned certain Shi practices which were particularly offensive to Sunnis such as the cursing of the first three caliphs. Personally, Nader is said to have been indifferent towards religion and the French Jesuit who served as his personal physician reported that it was difficult to know which religion he followed and that many who knew him best said that he had none. Nader hoped that Jairism would be accepted as a fifth school of Sunni Islam and that the Ottomans would allow its adherents to go on the Hajj or pilgrimage, to Mecca, which was within their territory. In the subsequent peace negotiations, 
The Ottomans refused to acknowledge Jairism as a fifth mazhab but they did allow Persian pilgrims to go on the Hajj. Nader was interested in gaining rights for Persians to go on the Hajj in part because of revenues from the pilgrimage trade. Nader's other primary aim in his religious reforms was to weaken the Safavids further since Shia Islam had always been a major element in support for the dynasty. He had the chief mullah of Persia strangled after he was heard expressing support for the Safavids. Among his reforms was the introduction of what came to be known as the Kolai Nadari. This was a hat with four peaks which symbolized the first four caliphs. Invasion of the Mughal Empire In 1738, Nader Shah conquered Kandahar, the last outpost of the Hotaki dynasty. His thoughts now turned to the Mughal Empire of India. This once powerful Muslim state was falling apart as the nobles became increasingly disobedient and the Hindu Marathas of the Maratha Empire made inroads on its territory from the southwest. Its ruler Muhammad Shah was powerless to reverse this disintegration. Nader asked for Afghan rebels to be handed over, but the Mughal Emperor refused. Nader used the pretext of his Afghan enemies taking refuge in India to cross the border and in a brilliant campaign against the governor of Peshawar he took a small contingent of his forces on a daunting flank march through nearly impassable mountain passes and to the enemy forces positioned at the mouth of the Khyber Pass completely by surprise, utterly beating them despite being outnumbered two to one. This led to the capture Azi, Kabul, Peshawar, Sindh and Lahore. He then advanced deeper into India crossing the river Indus before the end of year. The news of the Persian army's swift and decisive successes against the northern vassal states of the Mughal Empire caused much consternation in Delhi, prompting the Mughal ruler, Muhammad Shah, to summon an overwhelming force of some 300,000 men and march this gigantic host north towards the Persian army. Nader Shah crushed the Mughal army in less than three hours at the huge Battle of Karnal on February 13, 1739. After this spectacular victory, Nader captured Muhammad Shah and entered with him into Delhi. When a rumor broke out that Nader had been assassinated, some of the Indians attacked and killed Persian troops. Nader, furious, reacted by ordering his soldiers to plunder and sack the city. During the course of one day 20,000 to 30,000 Indians were killed by the Persian troops, forcing Muhammad Shah to beg Nader for mercy. In response, Nader Shah agreed to withdraw, but Muhammad Shah paid the consequence in handing over the keys of his royal treasury, and losing even the peacock throne to the Persian emperor. The peacock throne thereafter served as a symbol of Persian imperial might. It is estimated that Nadir took away with him treasures worth as much as 700 million rupees. Among a trove of other fabulous jewels, Nadir also gained the Koi Noor and Jiraiyi Noor diamonds. The Persian troops left Delhi at the beginning of May 1739. Nadir's soldiers also took with them thousands of elephants, horses, and camels, loaded with the booty they had collected. The plunder seized from India was so rich that Nader stopped taxation in Iran for a period of three years following his return. After India The Indian campaign was the zenith of Nader's career. Afterwards he became increasingly despotic as his health declined markedly. Nader had left his son Reza Kalimtsa to rule Persia in his absence. Reza had behaved high-handedly and somewhat cruelly but he had kept the peace in Persia. Having heard rumors that his father had died, he had made preparations for assuming the crown. These included the murder of the former Shah Tarmasp and his family, including the nine-year-old Abbas III. On hearing the news, Reza's wife, who was Tarmasp's sister, committed suicide. Nader was not impressed with his son's waywardness and reprimanded him, but he took him on his expedition to conquer territory in Transoxiana. In 1740 he conquered Khanat of Kiva. After the Persians had forced the Uzbek Khanat of Bokhara to submit, Nader wanted Reza to marry the Khan's elder daughter because she was a descendant of his hero Genghis Khan, but Reza flatly refused and Nader married the girl himself. Nader also conquered Khwarezm on this expedition into Central Asia. Nader now decided to punish Dagis Tan for the death of his brother Ebrahim Kohli on a campaign a few years earlier. In 1741, while Nader was passing through the forest of Mazandaran on his way to fight the Dagis Tanis, an assassin took a shot at him but Nader was only lightly wounded. 
he began to suspect his son was behind the attempt and confined him to Tehran. Nader's increasing ill health made his temper ever worse. Perhaps it was his illness that made Nader lose the initiative in his war against the Lizjan tribes of Dagestan. Frustratingly for him, they resorted to guerrilla warfare and the Persians could make little headway against them. Nader accused his son of being behind the assassination attempt in Mazandaran. Reza angrily protested his innocence, but Nader had him blinded as punishment, although he immediately regretted it. Soon afterwards, Nader started executing the nobles who had witnessed his son's blinding. In his last years, Nader became increasingly paranoid, ordering the assassination of large numbers of suspected enemies. With the wealth he gained, Nader started to build a Persian navy. With lumber from Mazandaran, he built ships in Bashar. He also purchased 30 ships in India. He recaptured the island of Bahrain from the Arabs. In 1743 he conquered Amman and its main capital the city of Muscat. In 1743 Nader started another war against the Ottoman Empire. Despite having a huge army at his disposal, in this campaign Nader showed little of his former military brilliance. It ended in 1746 with the signing of a peace treaty, in which the Ottomans agreed to let Nader occupy Najaf. Domestic policies, Nader changed the Iranian coinage system. He minted silver coins, called Nadari, that were equal to the Mughal rupee. Nader discontinued the policy of paying soldiers based on land tenure. Like the late Safavids he resettled tribes. Nader Shah transformed the Shah Savan, a nomadic group living around Azerbaijan whose name literally means Shah lover, into a tribal confederacy which defended Iran against the Ottomans and Russians. In addition, he increased the number of soldiers under his command and reduced the number of soldiers under tribal and provincial control. His reforms may have strengthened the country, but they did little to improve Iran's suffering economy. Death and Legacy Nader became crueler and crueler as a result of his illness and his desire to extort more and more tax money to pay for his military campaigns. More and more revolts broke out and Nader crushed them ruthlessly, building towers from his victims a Euro unregistered trademark skulls in imitation of his hero Timur. In 1747, Nader set off for Khorasan where he intended to punish Kurdish rebels. Some of his officers feared he was about to execute them and plotted against him. Nader Shah was assassinated on June 20, 1747, at Kuchin and Khorasan. He was surprised in his sleep by Sela Bey, captain of the guards, and stabbed with a sword. Nader was able to kill two of the assassins before he died. After his death, he was succeeded by his nephew Ali Kale, who renamed himself Adil Shah. Adil Shah was probably involved in the assassination plot. Adil Shah was deposed within a year. During the struggle between Adil Shah, his brother Ibrahim Khan and Nader's grandson Shah Rukh almost all provincial governors declared independence, established their own states, and the entire empire of Nader Shah fell into anarchy. Finally, Karim Khan founded the Zand dynasty and became ruler of Iran by 1760, while Ahmad Shah Durrani had already proclaimed independence in the east, marking the foundation of modern Afghanistan. Nader Shah was well known to the European public of the time. In 1768, Christian VII of Denmark commissioned Sir William Jones to translate a Persian-language biography of Nader Shah written by his minister Mtsamidi Khan Astrobadi into French. It was published in 1770 as Histoire de Nader Shah. Nader's Indian campaign alerted the British East India Company to the extreme weakness of the Mughal Empire and the possibility of expanding to fill the power vacuum. Without Nader, eventual British, in India would have come later and in a different form, perhaps never at all, with important global effects. The descendants of Nader Shah threw his grandson Shah Rukh are under the Afshar Nadari surname. See also, Safavid conversion of Iran from Sunnism to Shiism, ideology of Safavids, Lesgins, history of the Caucasus, Treaty of Resht, Treaty of Kurdan, references. Sources, Michael Axworthy, The Sword of Persia, Nader Shah. From Tribal Warrior to Conquering Tyrant Hardcover 348 Pages Publisher, I.B. Tories Language
English ISBN 1-85043-706-8, The Cambridge History of Iran, Volume 7, Additional Reading, Lawrence Lockhart Nadir Shah, Ernest Tucker, Nadia Shah's Quest for Legitimacy in Posts of Favored Iran Hardcover 150 Pages Publisher, University Press of Florida Language, English ISBN 0-8130-2964-3, Michael Axworthy, Iran, Empire of the Mind, A History from Zoroaster to The Present Day ISBN 0-14-103629 X Publisher Penguin November 6, 2008 External links, Nader Shah's Portrait, Nader Shah Mausoleum and Museum.